always loved the story of Tam Ashanta, so I'm delighted to be down in air today to be retracing his steps on the Blue Bunnet Trail. And where better to start but in the very pub where he began his journey. Hello, Marina! Hello, Jane. Tell me this, how does it feel to run Scotland's most famous pub? Well, I don't feel as if we're on it. We're merely custodians, Jane. Oh, that's lovely. And tell me, has it changed much since Burns' day? No, really. I'm very glad to hear it. Well, I know a wee bit about the story of Tam Shanter, but I'm no expert. But I know a man who is. Will we head in? Why not? Here we are, Ken. Passed by an ingle, blazing finely. Hey, you like that? Absolutely. So tell us the story of Tam Ashantar. Well, Tam's here drinking with his mates. It's a fine night, he's enjoying himself, and then he realises, I've got to get home to my wife, Kate. So what does he do? He gets on his horse, Meg, canters through, maybe a wee bit tipsy, mm -hmm. going through the woods, it's a bit spooky, and he comes across Alloway Kirk, and he sees it up a blaze. So what am I going to do? He goes into the window and he sees a coven of witches and the devil dancing all around. He's fascinated by this, but he then disturbs them. So what happens? They chase after him and he gets on his horse, Meg, goes over the bridge. One of them grabs hold of the tail and cuts it off. It's an absolute epic. Oh, smashing. Will we retrace town steps? Let's just go. Come on, let's go and do the blue bunnet trail. There's the man himself. I see he's popular with the seagulls. <laughs> How did Tam O'Shanter come to be written? Tam O'Shanter was written as a piece of work to accompany a drawing of Alloway Kirk and Captain Francis Gross's Antiquities of Scotland in 1791. Burns requested that the Kirk be in the book as it was the resting place of his father. Gross agreed on the condition that Burns write an accompanying story. Oh, I can't wait. Where do we go from here? Down to the old racecourse. Here we Course, there was a race track here until about 1907. Now we're turning left here and following the red path round to the golf course. I don't think Tam would have been worried about golf that dark stormy night, would he? Nay, Gauf, just geese and bullets. They were the owls. Now we're heading into the trees. Now this whole area would have been thick woods at that time, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. Where Tam scalp it on through muck and mire. Despising wind and rain and fire. And remember, for Burns' audience, spooks and ghosts were frighteningly real. Oh, you're not the only ones. So, Ken, who was the real Tam O'Shanter? His name was Douglas Graham, and he owned the Shanter farm near Kirkoswald. His real wife was Helen, and she was renowned for nagging him for his drinking. Graham used to sit at the fire in the pub and tell fantastic tales to his boozing buddy, John Davidson. Suitor Johnny. Correct and then Graham repeated them to appease his wife's questioning when he finally staggered home. And that's where Burns' story of Tam O'Shanter came from. Believe it if you like. So by this time he was across the ford, where in the snow the chapman smurred. <laughs> Getting mere and mere feet. <laughs>
use that, eh? So, were there any other stories that Douglas Graham told? Aye. In one story, he blamed children for pulling out his horse's tail hair for fishing line while he was in the pub. He, of course, had to chase all the kids to reclaim his horse's tail, making him very late home. Aye, right, course he did. Aye. The Jack and Ori of his day. And through the winds and by the cairn, where hunters found the murdered bairn. It's a brutal poem, isn't it? <sighs> Smothered in snow, murdered bairns, suicide. Burns would have known that over 3,000 people in Scotland had been accused of witchcraft in the previous two centuries. The majority were found guilty and then strangled before their body was burnt at the stake. That's horrendous, isn't it? Absolutely. Before him, Dune pours all his floods. The doubling storm roared through the woods. The lightning flashed from pole to pole and near, more near, the thunders roll. Now, I've heard it said that his brother Gilbert reckoned that he sat by the river Dune and wrote the poem in a day. In a day, Ken. Unbelievable. Maybe even right here. Maybe through those leaves. Up here's where Mungo's mother hanged herself. I'll never make it up these stairs. Kirkalloway was drawing nigh where geese and hullets nightly cry. Gives you the willies. It does. When glimmering through the trees, Kirkalloway seemed in a bleeze. There's his father's grave. Oh, so it is. Oh. Oh, now there's the window where Tam saw the witches and the warlocks in a dance, yes? A winnock bunker in the east, there sat old Nick and shape a beast. And there was one buxom witch that was dancing about in a short petticoat. Cutty sack! Tan got so excited that he lost his composure and shouted, Wheel bun Cutty sack! And in an instant, all was dark. So, then they chased them to the brig, is that right? Absolutely. Will we go? On you go. I'll race you. Aye. But just as they got to the top of the brig, Nan grabbed Meg's tail and pulled it off. They escaped, but only just. So, the model of this tail is? If I to drink, you are inclined and cutty sacks run on your mind. Think. He may buy the joys our dear. Remember Tam O'Shanter's mare. What an experience that was. I love the Blue Bonnet Trail. Thank you so much, Ken. It's been a pleasure, Jane. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I hope you don't mind. I'm going to have to get home to my wife, Kate. <laughs>